Her Excellency, Madame Bokova, Director General of the UNESCO, and His Excellency, Mr. Isao Kiso, the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary, Permanent Delegates of Japan to UNESCO, and the representatives from Ministry of Education, Culture, Education, uh, Education, Culture, Sports, and Science, MEX, so called, Mumbusho. And uh, honorable guests, and dear colleagues, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to have an opportunity to make a short address to you on this uh, very honorable occasion, welcoming uh, Madame Bokova, the Director General of UNESCO. <clears throat> First of all, for me, it's very honorable to make a short an announcement that UNESCO and Kyoto, Kyoto University have just concluded successfully an agreement concerning the establishment of internship programs signed by Madame Bokova and myself as president of this university, Kyoto University, a moment ago. <clears throat> the agreement seeks to strengthen the relationship between Kyoto University and UNESCO and provide Kyoto University graduates and undergraduates, of course, and postgraduates in relevant fields with an, op with an opportunity to gain a better understanding of UNESCO while enhancing their own knowledge and providing UNESCO with talented and qualified assistants. We also hope to explore a possibility of including our faculty and staff members as well in the internship program. I am sure that the program will be of great mutual benefit for us on both sides and that our students and staff will gain a great deal from working at the top level international institution that is UNESCO. <clears throat> As we are joined by many people here tonight, I'm very pleased to see those, including the representati representatives from UNESCO and related say, many governmental officers and citizens and students and our staff members, I'd like to take this opportunity to take, to take a chance to tell you about, briefly, the explanation of this university, Kyoto University, in a very short time. This university was established in 1897, 115 years back from now. Kyoto University was established to promote research on science and technology as well as humanities as an integrated university in that area 115 years ago. The academic style is very unique. First of all, we, this university was established here in Kyoto where the very first university was established in this city back in 9th century. The form of the university at that time was called the University College. Of course, it had a president, university president, and professors, and students, of course, and also, amazingly enough, they have had, they had already a graduate student too. Ninth century, very old university, was established in Kyoto. So this university was, was established in this city, Kyoto, which 
say, esteem the scholarly and the science and technology and knowledge as the first place of ordinary living and way of thinking of the world. <laughs> the academic style, therefore, of this university is deeply imbued with the rich cultural heritage of this Kyoto city. <clears throat> As you may know, since we have a special guest from UNESCO, I'd like to touch upon this point, that the Kyoto city and its surrounding area, including Uji city, Uji city include 17 world heritage in this small town. And many, of course, many other historic and scenic sites too. And you may be surprised to hear that we have more than 800 temples in this small city, more than 800 city, temples and shrines. And you may be more surprised to know that uh, the number of priests living in, the city, in this city is more than 8,000. So this is a very, very historic city which enhances this university capability to self-standing and produces a very eminent researchers from this university as well, uh, as, well as a, a good educator, I believe. <laughs> and uh, this kind of a superb environment of this region gives, a, gives us a very rich cultural and uh, scientific milieu for this university. And there is no doubt that we could have a capability of producing a very eminent researchers in the world, including Nobel winners. And I'm proud to say that this year, Professor Yamanaka won the Nobel Prize in physiology and physi physiology or medicine. And so far, we have received from this university, we have received eight Nobel winners out of 16 from Japan. And this university has a strength in, in producing such a kind of eminent uh, researchers. Not only the Nobel Prize, we have uh, many other, say, good scientists, including a Fuse scientist, Fuse Medal scientist in mathematics. And you may know that uh, Professor Mochizuki, who is uh, one of the professors at uh, uh, our Research Institute for Mathematics, say, announced that they, he succeeded in solving so-called ABC problem, which has not yet been proved by the world mathematicians, but will be proved, takes probably 20, 30 years. Then it's pro it's, if it's proven, this is the greatest, say, mathematical problem which has ever solved in this century. So this kind of uh, trial sometimes looks very odd, but uh, very, they, stick, they like to stick to the truth. This is the basement of this university. I might say too much about this university on that point. And this university has about 22,000, more than 22,000 students, out of which uh, 13,000 is undergraduates, and 9,000 is uh, graduate students. And for academic researchers, number is about 3,000. The number of non-academic staff is 2,600. And uh, among the students, about uh, 1,700, or 14 to 1,700 these are foreign students studying at this university. Mostly, they are in the graduate course. The undergrads number is very, very small, like uh, 170, or, or et cetera. <coughs> we have been organized by signing up with UNESCO in collaboration with the activities of UNESCO for about two decades already, prior to this new signing. We have two decades, say, achievements, collaboration with UNESCO already. I sincerely hope that a new stage after signing this uh, new program, which I've just launched, I sincerely hope the, the co cooperation and collaboration with UNESCO would be uh, very fruitful, more than ever, and a further opportunity to 
receive outcomes, output outcomes from this mutual corporations. And this is because we sincerely hope that we can produce and send out the students who has a truly international sense, so international leaders. That's more important. From that point, we are, I am very glad to be cooperative with UNESCO and many other international institutions. This evening, as Professor Takara announced, I have honor to have, uh, say, a lecture uh, Her Excellency, Madame Bokova, from now on. Uh, looking forward to learn, especially for students, to learn many things, her good sense of internationality and good view toward the future. And I hope everybody would learn something and would be say, inspired by her excellent talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>